In this video, I want to introduce you to volume of revolution. Okay, so let's say that we have a curve uh, that looks something like this. Okay, it doesn't matter what it looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that curve. I'm going to take it and rotate it so it comes out of the board and right round. Okay, so what we're going to find is we're going to get, uh, I'm going to try and do this mirror image there, okay? What we're going to get is a shape that goes all the way around, okay? So it comes out of the board, goes all the way around, and creates this kind of uh, rippling kind of tube shape. Okay, and what's important is that if I sliced down vertically, okay, at any point along this shape, what you would find, if you looked at the cross section, it would be looking like uh, you were chopping a cucumber in half, for example. Um, you would find that you have created two circles when you pull it apart, okay? And that means that every cross-section that you make is a circle. So for each uh, cross-section, what you find is that each one will have a separate radius, okay? And depending on where you make your cut, the circle will have a slightly different size, and so a slightly different radius. And so the radius and the size of the circle will actually depend on the y value. So this curve will have a will be a function of x, okay? And for each x value, there will be a particular y coordinate. And that will tell you the radius of each of the circular slices. So we know that for a circle, the area of a circle, so this area, is given by pi r squared. But if we're looking at each area, then actually the r is y, okay, because we're looking at... Um, because the radius depends on where we are. And what we're going to do is, well, effectively, a volume is adding up all those areas together, OK? Because we're taking that area and multiplying it by the length of the shape. That's effectively what you do, OK? So what we're saying is that you get your pi y squared, and you're effectively multiplying it by a little bit of x each time, a very thin strip, OK? So to get the volume of that shape, you've got pi y squared, the area, multiplied by the width, and you're adding them all together. And so the integral symbol is effectively an infinite sum adding up all these infinitesimally thin circles together. And that is where the formula comes from. So this will calculate the volume of the shape that is formed by rotating the curve about the x-axis. OK? So if that is rotating about the x-axis, How about rotating about the y-axis, OK? So if we draw a diagram for that, so here's a y-axis. Uh, let's say my curve looks something like that, OK? And I want to rotate that about the y-axis, then Let's see what it would look like. OK. 
Okay, it would look something like that, something like this. Kind of almost bowl shape, okay, effectively. And what you'll find is that now each of those radii, okay, for each of the circles no longer depends on where on the value of y, but it actually depends on the value of x, where I am along the x-axis. Okay, so each of those will have a radius of x, and it changes depending on where you are on the curve. And so we would actually have pi r squared, which is pi x squared, and you're multiplying it by the width of each of these strips, which is an infinitesimally thin amount. But it's in the y direction, so we could call that dy, and we're going to add all of those together. And that is the formula we need to rotate about the y-axis. OK, so we've got two very similar formulas, and these will allow us to find the volumes rotating 360 degrees, either about the x-axis or about the y-axis.